Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be calculating the integral of 1 over x to the 4th power plus 1 over the real numbers. And we're going to be using some contour integration for this, so uh, yep, let's just dive right in. First of all, let's just call this integral here i, just so we know what we're solving later on. And let's just define for ourselves a new function. So let's call it f of z, and we're going to let it be equal to 1 over z to the 4th power plus one. So we're moving away from real valued inputs here to complex valued inputs. And what can we do with this thing right here? Well, it'd be nice if we can know where the singularities are, so where the poles are. So first of all, let's calculate the poles of our function f of z. So we want to know where this function blows up and it actually blows up when the denominator equals zero. So we want to find where z to the fourth power plus one equals zero. And well, that implies that c to the fourth power is equal to negative one but we want to rewrite our negative one a little bit we want to rewrite it into polar form because things are a bit nicer in that way so negative one if we multiply it by one nothing will change and to converting it to polar form negative one is exactly e to the i pi and to one we want to write it as e to the two pi i times k where k is equal to zero one, two, and three. And the reason why we don't have four and onward, because once we reach four, we're actually going to repeat the whole thing once we divide both of the exponents by four right here. So we have it in this form right here. So dividing both of the exponents by four right here, we're going to get z is equal to e to the i pi and four times e to the i times 2k, I'll write it like that, times pi and four. And we can actually bring both of these together because they have the same base. So we have e factoring out i times pi and 4. We have i pi and 4. Then 1 plus 2k like so. All right. And now to figure out where our poles are, we just need to substitute in 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if I draw up the complex plane right here, where this is our real axis and imaginary axis. If we plug 0 into this k right here, we're just going to get e to the i pi and 4 which lives somewhere right here plugging 1 into here we're going to get e to the i 3 pi over 4 plugging 2 in we're going to get a pole down here so e to the i 5 pi over 4 and finally our last pole lies right here e to the i 7 pi over 4 all right so now we've established where our poles are let's actually get on with defining our contour for this integral so for our contour we're going to be choosing a semicircular contour in this case so i'll just draw it up right now so our contour will, will look something like that okay and we're going to have the contour run from negative r to r so running this way and then running upwards over along this arch right here and we're going to call this contour C and this little curvy part right here, gamma. And notice one thing here. So we have this contour here and this is actually what we want to integrate over. And the reason for that will become clear in just a sec. So we have the contour integral of f of z dz. And we can actually decompose this contour up into multiple parts. So first of all, we have the path along the real axis. So from negative r to r of f of and since we're on the real axis we can change the z's to x's so f of x dx then adding the integral over this curve gamma right here so integral over gamma of f of z dz and the nice thing is as we let our r here in approach infinity we're actually going to get back our original integral right here running from negative infinity to infinity and one more thing here we want our r to be greater than one to make sure that we enclose these two poles right here. So for this integral, we only need to deal with two of these poles right here. All right, so now that we've established that, let's actually go, go ahead and calculate the value of this contour in school right here. So what is the value of this thing? It's going to be equal to two pi i times the sum of the residues of a function f. I'll just write it like that. And what exactly are our residues? Well, we have to consider both of these poles inside of our contour right here. So first of all, let's find the residue uh, let's say this pole right here, e to the i pi and 4. So we want to find the residue at the point z equals e to the i pi and 4 of our function f. And what is that? That's just the limit as some z approaches that pole, so e to the i pi and 4. 
of z minus that same pulse e to the i pi over 4 times our function. But our function in this case is just 1 over z to the 4th power plus 1. And notice one thing here. When our z becomes e to the i pi and 4, this part right here will be exactly 0. And plugging e to the i pi and 4 into here, z to the 4th power, we're going to get negative 1. But negative 1 plus 1, that's exactly 0. So we have a 0 divided by 0 situation here. So why don't you use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit right here. So differentiating the top, so this part right here, we're just going to get 1. So we have the limit as z approaches e to the i pi over 4 of 1 over denominator, the derivative of that will be 4z cubed. And now, since that we don't have any problems with zeros or anything anymore, we can directly plug this pole into our z right here. So we have 1 over 4 e to the i pi over 4 raised to the third power and we can just clean things up a little bit here that's exactly a quarter and multiplying this three into here we're going to get three pi over four and putting a negative in there to flip everything up to the numerator we're going to get e to the negative i three pi over four and this right here is exactly our residue at this pole right here so what does that mean we have two pi i times this residue right here so one quarter e to the negative i 3 pi over 4 and we still have to calculate our second residue for our second pole right here so instead of having e to the i pi on 4 it's going to be 3 pi on 4 in this case so we're still going to have z minus something so that's going to be a 3 pi on 4 up there again on the denominator if we plug this pole into here we're going to get a zero on the denominator so we have a zero divided by zero situation Using L'Hopital's rule again, derivative of the top is still 1, derivative of the bottom is still 4z cubed, and plugging the new pole in, we should get 3 pi over 4. And multiplying everything out, we're going to get negative i times 9 pi over 4, but 9 is exactly 8 plus 1. But if we have 8 over 4, that's exactly 2 pi, which is a complete revolution. So 9 pi and 4, uh, we can rewrite this as just simply pi and 4. And this right here is our second residue. So we have plus one quarter e to the negative i pi over four. And we can close that off right there. So once we've calculated our residues, we can finally go ahead and continue calculating the value of our contour right here. So first of all, let's bring these fours out to the front. So we have pi i divided by two of e to the negative i three pi over four plus e to the negative i pi over 4 and if you know a couple of things about complex exponential functions you might notice that this almost looks like the complex sine or cosine except these arguments right here are completely messed up so we want to fix this a little bit somehow let's have a look at pi over 4 right here ideally we want this to turn into 3 pi over 4 and we actually need to consider this negative right here so if we bring this negative and here we have negative pi over 4. And if we look at our unit circle right here, negative pi over 4 is exactly here, while 3 pi over 4 is exactly here. So maybe if we multiply this part right here by e to the i pi, we can turn this angle into 3 pi over 4, but we can't simply multiply by e to the i pi. We also have to divide by e to the i pi to keep the same value. So let's just write out everything right here. We're going to have pi times i over 2 of e to the negative i 3 pi over 4 plus e to the i negative pi over 4. And we're going to multiply by e to the i pi and immediately divide by e to the i pi, which is exactly e to the negative i pi. And you see here, when we multiply these two parts here together, we're going to get pi i over 2 times e to the negative 3 pi over 4. And then that part right here will turn into plus e to the i 3 pi over 4. And then e to the negative i pi, that's just negative 1. So let's change this plus to a negative right here. And you see now we almost have the complex exponential definition of the sign. But we just need to switch these two around. So if we multiply by negative in here, so factoring the negative out to the front, so we have minus pi times i over 2. And now we can swap the order of this, so e to the i pi over 3 minus e to the negative i 3 pi over 4. And we can bring this 2 into this bracket right here. And we're actually missing something down here as well. We're actually missing an i. 
So multiplying an i on the denominator and also an i up here, we're going to get a negative one, which will cancel out with this negative right here. So overall, let's turn this part here into our sine. So now we have pi times the sine of three pi over four and sine of three pi over four, that's exactly root two over two. So we have pi times root two over two. So the value of our contour right here is actually pi times root two over two, which we just evaluated. And now we have to figure out this gamma part right here. So to evaluate this part right here, we actually need to prove that it's equal to zero. And to do that, we need to do a little estimation. So let's just take the absolute value of the integral over gamma of f of z dz and you have the absolute value of the integral that's actually less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value so integral absolute value of f of z dz because if you think about real functions you might be integrating over negative regions as well which will decrease the area of the integral whereas here we're flipping all the negative stuff into the positive regions so automatically this integral becomes greater than the absolute value of this integral right here and what is f of z right here that's exactly the integral of 1 over z to the fourth power plus 1 an absolute value and we can split the absolute value up to be on the numerator and the denominator so we have dz right here and let's take a look at the absolute value of z to the fourth power plus 1 so absolute value of z to the fourth power plus 1 we're going to be using the reverse triangle inequality on this because we actually want to show that it's bigger than something so what does the reverse triangle inequality say it says that if we have a minus b well, that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of A minus the absolute value of B. So how can we force a negative right here? Well, adding a one is exactly the same as subtracting a negative one like so. And now we can apply this reverse triangle inequality to say that it's bigger than or equal to the absolute value of the absolute value of Z to the fourth power minus the absolute value of negative one and the absolute value of negative one that's exactly just one and also absolute value of z to the fourth power is exactly absolute value of z but raised to the fourth power and then we have a minus one right here and notice one thing here on our curve gamma right here so this curve right here if z belongs on that curve the absolute value of z will actually always be equal to the radius of this curve right here because we define the radius of our semicircle to be exactly r so if we consider any point z on this curve right here its modulus will also be r so we can rewrite this as the absolute value of r to the fourth power minus one and one more thing here we said that r was greater than one so here, r to the fourth power will also be always greater than one. So we can ignore these absolute values here because it's never gonna be negative. So what did we just show right here? We showed that absolute value of c to the fourth plus one, that's greater than or equal to r to the fourth power minus one. And if this is greater than or equal to that, then if we take the reciprocal, so one over z to the fourth plus one, that's automatically less than or equal to one over r to the fourth power minus one. And the reason for that is because dividing by a bigger number will give you a smaller result. So we can say that this integral right here, since the integrand is less than or equal to this part, we can say that it's less than or equal to the integral over gamma of one over r to the fourth power minus one dz and what is this integral right here well notice that r is independent of z so this whole integrand is kind of like a constant it's not even integrand anymore so this is equal to one over r to the fourth power minus one integral over gamma of dz and if you're integrating one over gamma that's exactly the arc length of this whole entire gamma part right here so what is the arc length of that it's exactly going to be pi times r and remember we wanted r to approach infinity so that this integral right here actually becomes our original i so as r approaches infinity so taking the limit as r goes to infinity this thing right here will actually go to zero because r to the fourth power right here will grow so much faster than this lonely r right here that it's just going to overtake and everything's going to become zero so what did we just find right here 
we found that the absolute value of the integral over gamma, all of that stuff right here, it's less than this integral, which is less than this integral, and taking the limit as r approaches infinity, it's equal to zero. So overall, the absolute value of this integral right here is less than or equal to zero but the absolute value is always positive. So the only way a positive number can be less than or greater than zero is if this whole entire thing is zero as well. So this whole entire thing goes to zero. So overall, what did we find right here? This integral over gamma here in the limit as r approaches infinity is just simply zero. All right, so what did we just find right here? We found that the contour integral over c is exactly pi times the square root of two over two. And that's exactly the integral from negative r to r. And f of x is one over x to the fourth power plus one dx, plus this integral right here, but uh, that's exactly zero. And remember for this integral right here, we took the limit as our r here approaches infinity. And in the limit, this whole thing here will turn into our original integral i like so. So this whole thing here, that's equal to i. And since that's exactly the value of the contour, we can conclude that i, our integral we wanted to define at the very start, is exactly pi times the square root of two over two. And this here is the final answer for our integral. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see everyone next time.